Well, hey, good evening, everyone. I'm glad you can join me tonight or whenever you watch this, obviously, for our midweek moment. A little video encouragement for you in the middle of your week. Uh, I had a great time tonight here at Kansas Christian Church. We're doing a week-by-week -week study through the Bible, just kind of giving an overview of each, of each book of the Bible and making our way through. We started a couple weeks ago with Genesis. This week we did Exodus. Had a great discussion. I made... Um, crab rangoon dip to go with our, our little time together tonight. And I was pretty excited about making this. I went to the store last night and I bought the cream cheese I needed and I was supposed to pick up imitation crab meat and they were all out of imitation crab meat. So I thought, well, I guess I might as well get the real stuff. I mean, how bad can it be? And I thought, you know what? I don't really know how much of this it's gonna take. So I went ahead and just bought two. And I got home and I looked at the bill and I was like, how did I spend that much money? And I <laughs> went back over it. I bought like $26 worth of crab meat last night. I had no idea that that's why people eat the fake stuff because the real stuff, as delicious as it is, it was wonderful, but the real stuff, ugh, pretty expensive. So uh, I've, got some, uh, I've got some crab. That's my investment for the week. <laughs> I'm investing in crab. Uh, glad you're with us tonight. This coming Sunday, we're, we're making our way on Sunday mornings through the Gospel of Luke. I love the story that Luke is telling about Jesus all through his Gospel because all through Luke's Gospel, Jesus meets people. He encounters people, people who are a lot like you and me. He encounters people who have had it rough in life. Some people have been rejected. Some people are held off at a distance. And Jesus is willing not only to talk to these people and meet these people, he's willing to touch them. He's willing to eat with them. And I just think there's a wonderful lesson in the Gospel of Luke about welcoming others. And when we welcome the people that Jesus welcomes, we're welcoming Jesus. It's a beautiful thing. But unfortunately, the story doesn't begin that well, and it doesn't begin with that much of a, a positive story. Hey, Colin, glad you're with us. Good morning. Well, good morning to you, my friend. This week, we're looking at Jesus uh, preaching at his home synagogue, his home church in Nazareth. So Jesus uh, goes back home and preaches in the congregation where he grew up. This guy sounds really familiar <laughs> to me. Um, he gets up on the Sabbath, and it says in Luke chapter 4, beginning in verse 17, the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll, and he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and the recovery of sight to the blind and to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. The people Jesus came for are the poor, the, the oppressed, the people who are in need of being set free. And it's important for us to remember that. Now that, that passage that Jesus read from there, it comes from Isaiah. It comes from Isaiah chapter, chapter 61. And it continues on, if you read through Isaiah 61, the very next verse that Jesus doesn't read is, is verse 3, where he goes on, he says, not only has he uh, get pre prepared me to preach good news to the poor and, and do all these other things, but in verse 3, to grant to those who mourn in Zion, to grant to those who mourn and to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes. And when we chose that, that particular verse in 2011 when our church burned down. We chose to look at this as God promises to bring beauty from ashes. Isn't that a great promise that he takes those ashes of our lives, the, the things that have been ruined in our lives, the things that have been burned up, maybe even burned out, just the way that we have feel, felt used up and, and, and thrown away. And God takes those ashes, things that other people would just toss aside, and he makes something beautiful out of them. It goes on and he says, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. I love that he says the oaks of righteousness. If you read through the, the book of Isaiah, trees are very important. 
Uh, you have to stop and pay attention to the trees. Isaiah talks about a lot of different trees and, and a lot of different plants. You have to pay attention to those. Oaks, just like today, oaks back then, that was a, were a wonderful symbol of strength. Uh, an oak firmly planted with its roots deep in the ground, that oak wasn't going to go anywhere. But that oak, as big and as powerful, as massive, as strong as it might be, it has to start somewhere. And you know, the, the oak comes from the, from the tiny little acorn. And in fact, one chapter earlier, well, not even a chapter earlier, just a few verses earlier in Isaiah chapter 60, verses 21 and 22, Isaiah writes, Your people shall all be righteous. They, they couldn't imagine that at that time. Your people shall all be righteous. They shall possess the land forever. The branch of my planting, the work of my hand, that I may be glorified. The branch of my planting, the work of my hand, that I may be glorified. The least of these will become a clan, and the smallest one a mighty nation. I am the Lord, and in its time I will hasten it. I love what Isaiah tells us about God. I love what God tells us through Isaiah, I guess. Uh, God planted it. God is growing it. In your life, uh, he planted hope and he's growing hope. He planted strength and he's growing strength. He planted grace and he's growing grace. There's times when it doesn't look like much to you and me. There's times when our faith seems small, when it seems weak. There's times when it just seems difficult for us to hold on through the day to day in life. And it's hard to feel strong, but God says, I planted it and I will grow it from that little acorn of faith. I will grow a mighty oak. And I love that last line there. He says, I will hasten it. I will speed it up. I, what I hear God saying, what I really hear him saying in that is, I can't wait to see how strong you're going to be. I can't wait to see what you're capable of in your strength, in your faith, in the way that you're going to stand firm. The things that today get you down, the things that today cause you headache and heartache and turmoil, the things today that frustrate you and drive you crazy, one day God's going to grow you to a place where you can stand firm just like the oak. God says, I, I hasten that day. He says, I can't wait to see you that strong. There's another scripture that comes to mind and it's in some words at the beginning of Paul's letter to the Philippians. In chapter 1, verse 6, he writes to these friends who live in this town of, of Philippi, and, and they go to church there, and he writes to them, and he says, I'm sure of this. This is something I'm sure of. He says, he who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. You and I can't always see that. And sometimes in the, in the middle of the mess, in the middle of the moment, when we are feeling our weakest, when we're feeling our most vulnerable, we can't imagine what that day is going to be like when God completes that work. But it's coming. And not only is it coming, God says, I can't wait. I can't wait to see you that strong. We're going to take a moment and pray. I want to ask you to be praying for a friend of mine, a couple that I absolutely love, Jess and Patty. And Jess today got a kidney transplant. And I got word from Patty just uh, maybe an hour ago or so that everything went really well. Jess is resting in his room. A little bit of pain, obviously, but he's comfortable. He's doing well, and he wanted me to pass on to our church his thanks for us praying. So if you would with me tonight, and as you think about him this week, say a prayer for Jess. Uh, I know he really would appreciate it. Let's take a moment and pray. Father, we thank you for your, not only your presence and your promise, Father, I thank you that you're growing things within us, things that we can't even begin to imagine right now. But as you sit back and watch us grow, your thought is, I can't wait to see what they're going to do. I can't wait to see what it's going to be like when they're strong, when they're stronger, when they're the strongest. And so, Lord, we obviously want to pray for patience. Uh, doesn't sound like you're very patient about this, but, but we want to pray for patience. But we also, Lord, want to pray for perspective and to remind ourselves uh, that you have begun something good in every one of us. And you are faithful and you will see it to completion. 
thank you for what you completed in Jess today with a new kidney. And uh, we want to see you continue to work in him. We want to see continued healing. We want to see his body accepting that kidney and being knit together perfectly. And we want to have a wonderful story to tell of your faithfulness and the way that the way that he's been cared for by you and by those who have, are, are taking care of him in the hospital and the way that you're caring for his whole family. Lord, we love you. Thank you for your love for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This Sunday at Kansas Christian Church, Luke chapter 4. We're talking about Jesus going back to his home church and preaching. And then they run him out of town and they try to throw him off a cliff. I'm really glad there are no cliffs anywhere near Kansas, Illinois, because I have a feeling I probably would have already been taken there. Anyway, have a great week. God bless. We'll talk to you soon.